my favorite thing to tell to tell people is there's nothing wrong with you because mm -hmm. we're always told there's something wrong with us and all of the things that we experience depression nervousness social anxiety those are all like part there's nothing wrong with you <laughs> you know what i mean it's like i think once you really let that set in just like you said giving yourself a little grace it's amazing because then there's there's nothing that's you, you can't do anything wrong and in fact i think we talked about on, on your podcast about the idea is like like every time that you fail it's either from a lack of knowledge or a lack of discipline and you can't control that you didn't have either of those things so mm -hmm. it was predestined like you, you you were you had to do that so it's not your it, like in some way it's really not your fault like you can't blame yourself yeah so and 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 i think as well that's a beautiful and i love how simple that is it's like there's nothing wrong with you i've never heard someone say that like in my engaging in personal development it's so simple it's so potent but if you like not only is it important to acknowledge that you didn't have the discipline or you didn't have the knowledge and it's okay to feel how you are but if you take it one step further and you reverse engineer the people that are most successful in the world, whether it's Lady Gaga, Oprah, Joe Rogan, Conor McGregor, Tony Robbins, whoever, they don't only say, oh, it's okay, Tony, you didn't do this. They always frame things to their advantage. So if Tony stuffs up, he'll be like, you know what, that's perfect. Like how freaking awesome that you had the courage to, to actually go and do it anyway. They don't just find that it's okay, they find a way to champion and champion themselves through it. Like for example, with Conor McGregor recently, who was going on benders for a couple of years after he made all this money and didn't know how to deal with it. <laughs> I see this with all, like I know a lot of the dudes listening will resonate with this, but they criticize themselves over anything, like any drop of that. It's just like anything happens, oh, you idiot, or you shouldn't have done that, or you should be like this confident person, or you should be further ahead, or if, if you really were gonna make it, you would have been able to do this. And it's all this like framing things outside of what's going to be supportive for you but conor mcgregor I, I love this example he comes back he's being interviewed by journalists after punching a dude in the an old man in the face throwing a trolley through a bus window breaking the law several times smashing a tourist's phone going out and getting smashed and having benders all the time just complete vanity arrogance all of the things he comes back after two years and journalists are like, how do we know that you're going to like stay on track this time? He's in the lead up to the, his first fight in a while. And he's like, I stuffed up totally. And he owns it. Oh. And he says, but what would you expect? I made a hundred million dollars. I didn't know what to do with that. I reacted the way that I did and I've learned from it. And now I'm back and I'm better than ever as a result of that. So yeah. just watch. And so he's taken something that other people would feel deep shame about for a long period of time and he's framed it to his advantage he's given himself massive grace and then he said i'm back and better than ever and i find a lot of people don't frame things to their advantage they criticize and feel all this they feel ashamed and and what you said there i feel is a very potent antidote to that which is there's nothing wrong with you and you may as well frame everything to your advantage because what's the opposite just to feel shame it's, it's not help. Yeah, it's it's funny. One of my business partners used to hate it because every time he would tell me something, he he would be like, "John, I know what you're gonna say. I'm like, what am I gonna say? He's, he's gonna you're gonna say that's good because <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Because <laughs> I realized that's what I just say all the time is that's good because no matter what kind of bad news he's like, whatever bad news I bring you, you just always say that's good because like don't say that's good because. And it's like because yeah. well, you have to you have to turn it around. And I like what you said, that Conor McGregor one. I, I didn't realize that, but that's, I have this philosophy about never apologizing, never apologize, explain. Mm -hmm. It's like, I borrowed, borrowed part of it from Benjamin Disraeli. Uh, he, I think he has said the never explain or complain, but, but the apologize part, I think is important because you just own what you did. You know, I mean, so many people apologize as if like you made a choice and you did it so just own it it doesn't mean it was the right choice but there's you you made the choice that you had to make at that point in life because you were that person who made that choice like it wasn't you know and, and so just owning something i think is so valuable it's like you either yeah. you need to apologize you either make something right or or own it or both as opposed to giving lip service to a thing and and, and regretting like uh, to me apology looks like regret whereas owning looks like yeah i did this thing i grew from it it might have been the right thing it may have harmed people 
but I grew from it and, and that makes it a positive in the end. 